<clears throat> today I'm not moving out or anything. I actually have to do laundry. So today's laundry day. And today's proverb is going to be Belle livre ma poêle rat. Yep. A beautiful river. No laundry. Unable to take advantage of a good situation. Alright, well, let's go to the laundry room and also go to work. Welcome back, y'all. Um, so now we are doing some laundry. Yes, it is a different day, and yes, my dog is following me. And so we're just heading over there. There's some dog bowls to the laundry room. We got some Goran, Goran, and there it is, some light. And gotta throw some laundry in. Boop. So there is my <laughs> laundry detergent thingy. And yeah, I didn't break that button thing. Uh, somebody else did. And I'm being honest. I would tell you if I did, because I tell you guys every single time I break something. And I'm running two washing machines at the same time. So here we go, I got some light on, some more and I'm working on this patient. This is a little baby, a little hand. Uh, we're just doing some maybe duction, some correction. And as I'm working on it, this girl comes in. I go like, hey, hi, it's nice to see you. Um, yes, and so that is a hibiscus flower. And actually you can put it inside liquid and water and israel uses it to make some like cherry flavored teas which is really interesting and yes i'm working on this baby and the baby's little orthotic is done so generally united states we would never do this but since i'm in haiti and i have time of course i'm going to do it for anybody who comes through who needs it and yeah here's a bk uh, she's been wearing it for a while so she like hi guys <laughs> it's been so long since i I uh, posted anything for about a month or so. And now I'm posting again because I want you guys to see that I'm alive. See, I'm alive. I'm well. And you know, thank you all for those that check up on me. Some of you guys found me on Instagram and messaged me and just seeing how I was doing and everything. And I, I just really appreciate you guys for doing that. Also, I want to say that we're doing just fine in the hospital. Uh, there's been a couple of crazy moments, but we have had a little bit of a calm day. So, un pose. So, we're pose a little bit. And I do want to talk about stuff I did learn about Haiti. So, that's hopefully coming in next. I want to talk about things like naboule and napkambe and all of these slang terms that I've learned as well. I think they're so cool. Uh, but then historically, they're very interesting. And so I want to dive into that, uh, hopefully in a future video. So now that I've bugged you and I said hi and hello and everything like that, and that I'm just fine, <laughs> um, I hope you enjoy. Uh, and later on, we will be baking. <laughs> what are we doing? Eclairs. <laughs> Whoops, I forgot to say, uh, like, share, and subscribe, guys. Like, share, and subscribe. I, I, was, I should have, I, I said it first now. And then now I'll do the video that I'm gonna edit right over there. <laughs> so it's good that she's been wearing it for a while. And now I am just putting on a little cover here. I do like to try to do some shaping here. The shaping is so difficult because that foam cover, no matter where you go in Haiti to get prosthetics, this is the hardest part is to get a cover. And so I have to shape it to her leg. So that was really fun. Long, long shaping. I shaped this for like an hour or so, just trying to get the hang of this foam. And then I finally got it. Uh, I didn't feel finished the final product because I started rushing after this. And then yeah, her gait is all right. Uh, she's limping a lot. Uh, she doesn't have pain, but I need her to get used to it a little bit more. And she's gonna come back for a follow-up because I feel like we can do more gait training because she just doesn't trust her leg yet. But she will, she will, she's doing great. So we're here with Sammy, the one that I'm teaching about these braces, and we've already casted these patients in the hospital, and we brought these casts back to the office, and now we're doing some corrections. Now, the patients that we are currently working on, they couldn't really get into the corrected position just because of their formation of their legs. They had a lot of difficulties, and they're having a lot of pain and trouble. And so I just had Sammy uh, work with it and slowly work on the braces and get everything aligned. So he's just working 
on that and I'm just telling him what we're looking for. So the calcaneus in this is not straight, it's kind of angled and so we need to adjust it so that it is straight and it's not pointing in the wrong direction. And so Sammy is actually doing a great job doing some correction for it and keeping it so that he understands uh, where to take off some of the material and how to correct it. See right there, he is correcting it in the proper angle, which is great because that's what we're looking for, right? Uh, education is a, such a complicated thing. Uh, you have to not go slow or fast. It's literally whatever the pace of the student is and we just follow the pace. So that's always really exciting, especially when he starts catching on very quickly. And so that always makes my day. And so now we're just working with some plantar flexion and I'm telling him how straight that ankle joint needs to be and where we should be at the end of the brace. So I'm gonna have him describe what we're looking for. <laughs> so I know it, I knew it. So it's plantar flex. So Samuel. <laughs> This is called the dorsum. This is called the plantar. When you move, and so we just kind of finished up right here. We filled the molds and then I'm actually doing all the adjustments to the final. I casted this patient, he's a father um, and he had a family around him and he actually passed away, which is really sad. Yeah, it's hard. Patients are the most resilient people I've ever met in my life. Now I haven't traveled too far. I've gone around the world a little bit, but for right now, I just seen so much suffering here and there's so much resiliency. It's, it's very impressive. I'm gonna show you how I get drinking water. Yeah, so it's actually not a difficult process because you guys just have to turn on a little button. I have to carry everything just like that. And so I'm walking down with all three bottles. They're empty, of course. I have this nice little gate they made, so cool. And my dog, I looked at it for a second. This little tricky little latch here. And we're out. Close the door, there you go. Because if every single time that door stays open, Moki always runs down this road. If you go down this road onto the back, there's a dumpster and Moki likes to jump in there and try to get some snacks. Ah, so gross. And then, so I turn right, of course, and I'm going towards the water. So here's all the water bottles. Ta -da. And so I'm just taking some drinkable water. So this is drinkable water. We do have running water. We just don't have drinkable water. And yes, carrying two jugs of water. So it's five gallons each because I'm gonna cook. I'm cooking something today. So today we're cooking eclairs. It's a French dish and uh, eclair dough is just really simple butter flour some milk some other stuff i put the recipe in later and i just slowly add eggs to the mixture until it's kind of semi-peaky like that perfect and then i put it in this little baggie so i can squirt it out into nice little shapes but first i have to put the parchment down on this little metal sheet thing honestly i just found it so i'm super stoked that i have it now Pat, 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 pat. Yeah, I put a little bit of dough to the back just so that it doesn't roll up. That was actually in the cookbook. I do recommend to get that cookbook. And I'll put the cookbook right now. Yes. And so I'm just doing some different designs because I wanted it to be thicker. So this is the way I made it thicker. And then um, I actually double layered it. So I'm layering it again. But obviously I recorded my face and not what I was doing, so that's sad. So there's two layers of dough on each one of them. And then I covered it. Oh, and then the temperature was too high. So time to lower temperature to 415. Ta-da! And then you put it in right now. They actually requested that. And then boom, they're done. They're not perfect, but also I didn't poke a hole in all of them. You're supposed to poke like a little hole to aerate it because nah, I'm gonna fill it with filling. So they're not as hollow if you don't put a hole. And so I'm adding a little bit of the warm mixture to the egg, because you don't want to cook the egg all the way because then it's like, it's not gonna be good. You're just trying to slowly bring the eggs to temperature. And so that way I can make the filling. So there I'm putting some filling into the eclairs and I made some of this chocolate. This chocolate's actually Haitian chocolate. So I was really excited that I used gestation chocolate. Super cool. So 
today uh, I made eclairs. Here's an eclair. You saw the whole process. I didn't show you the this part, but this is just Haitian chocolate that I melted down. Then I didn't have cream, so I had to make cream, you know, two milk, one butter, 50 grams of uh, butter, and then 100 grams of milk, something like that. I melted the butter and I added that to the milk and then I mixed it until it turned into cream. Cream, I took the Haitian chocolate, I broke it down. Once I broke down the Haitian chocolate, I broke down in the blender, then I added it to a bowl and then I heated up water under it and then it started melting. And that's what you see right here. This is that chocolate right on the top of there. And the inside, of course, is that filling they see right there. Um, it's not perfect, um, but I'm working on it, okay? I'm eating an eclair in Haiti that I made, you know? I feel like that's kind of a win, right? Hmm. That's crazy. I won. Like if there was a competition, I won the today competition. That's good. Mercy. Wow. Oh, and there's some gunshots. But wow. <laughs> amazing hmm. eclairs in Haiti awesome trigger warning for all those that are French I'm about to do something just live with it okay the eclairs were not filled all the way so I'm just putting some filling on the top and on the bottom and then I'm putting some chocolate over it just because I just want more chocolate and filling and yeah, so this is trigger warning for all those that are actually French and really love eclairs. Yeah, and the chocolate got cold. Yes, I would consider this like an American style overfilled everything. And it tastes great, okay? <laughs> naughty, naughty. If you're French, I'm very sorry. Can I eat my eclairs? Cool. I made them in Haiti. Mm-hmm. <laughs>